Changemakers are Irish university researchers who are helping to shape our future with groundbreaking projects. They're committed to finding solutions to society's most complex challenges by working closely with some of the people who will benefit most. Welcome to Changemakers. Changemakers from Irish universities are developing innovative projects in the area of youth justice, which aim to navigate young people away from crime. In Maynooth University, we meet the team behind Story Exchange, which brings prisoners and students together through the power of story. In University of Limerick, Changemaker Sean Redmond heads up Greentown, a collaborative nationwide project that is helping protect vulnerable young people from a life in the crime network. Crime gangs are a real problem for some communities. They groom children to commit serious offences and then they try and keep them in their clutches. Here at the University of Limerick, we're using science to stop these networks recruiting children for crime. So the original motivation behind uh, the work that started the Greentown project was to try and find out more about the thousand or so children who were involved in very serious crime. At that point, we didn't actually know uh, anything about crime networks, and we were really keen to try and find out more about this group of children. While Greentown's location and characters are anonymous, this is real data about real people, helping identify those youngsters who are most at risk. So this is Greentown. This is the Greentown network. This is based on 12 months of pulse data on detections for burglary and drugs for sale and supply. So our green lines relate to burglary offences, our red lines relate to drugs for sale and supply. What you see are 31 individuals and really for the first time you can see these relationships between adults and children. G2, we know, is 14 years of age and a young male. Um, Z1 is a 28 year old male, so each of these individual nodes uh, on the network gets their own unique reference and that becomes really, really important when we want to start examining this network. So for instance, you might ask, what is a 29 year old adult male doing having a burglary relationship with a 15 year old male? You know, this is important because often when people talk about gangs, they think about youth gangs. But what we show in Greentown are these relationships between adults and children, really, really important. Johnny Connolly is looking at the forces that drive the illegal drugs market in Ireland, believed to be worth somewhere in the region of 750 million euro per annum. Well, one of the important things that the Greentown study has done and focused on is to try and examine how the market sustains itself. So what's its size, what's its shape, how does it function? One of the ways in which it sustains itself is through an endless supply of young people and often very vulnerable young people. The research gleaned from the Greentown project is attracting the attention of frontline groups from many communities across the country. Carl Duquay is a collaborator of the Greentown team and he leads the Targeted Response with Youth Team, or TRI, which is based in the heart of Denor Avenue in Dublin 8. There would be a lot of talk around this game about, like, suppose grooming young people into, like, the drug trade, but when you walk in areas like where I walk, you, you kind of see that it's not something that they set out to do. It kind of happens organically. When we first started engaging with the young people, it was only over 18s um, that we engaged with. But when you're looking at like the, the little ones standing around, looking at these people, looking at them, getting the money, getting the cars, getting all the, the gold chains, the jackets, whatever, the runners. It's a bubble that will soon burst because once they get into this sort of toxic relationship, and once they become indebted, which is usually what happens, well then they are extremely vulnerable. So young people become increasingly exposed and they are expendable. Using the anonymous data from the Gardaí and the court system, the Greentown team is gathering a picture on who are the most vulnerable in these typical crime networks. Greentown is a great piece of research, um, but I love the fact that they, they target the family members. You know, I love, the, I love that fact um, that because we see it all the time, we're dealing with these young people and they've lots of money, but it's not only them living off their proceeds, it's, it's the family members living off their proceeds as well. So obviously, if we're doing an intervention and 
you could have the family members upset that they're not going to have as much money coming into the house. So I think it's it's great the way they will target the family members as well. Chief Superintendent Colette Quinn is meeting with Sean's team. Greentown extends the role of the current youth diversion programme that is currently in place for young people with records of offences. Well, I worked with uh, Dr. John Redmond and, uh, way back from as far back as 2008, and we developed a lot of the Garda Youth Diversion projects, and we put, put sort of processes around those that really did work. And our youth workers and our JLOs in particular work very well together. And I suppose over the years, I certainly have noticed that um, there's a, a cohort of children that, you know, we didn't really know, you know, just what their, their circumstances were. We, we, we knew a, a lot about them, but not not all about them. So th those sort of, we did a survey and those sort of, uh, those children uh, amounted to about a thousand in total. And then the idea of, of run, running the research through the Greentown programme really gave us more information. Another member of the team is Jane Mulcahy, who is working on a four pillars approach that aims to secure the future of both the young person and the family. Why I wanted to join the Green Time Project, I suppose, is because it's youth justice, it's looking at teenagers. And I like the idea of trying to intervene to help vulnerable young people before it was not too late, because it's never too late. I think it has real potential because it is bringing together these four pillars and these various partners who traditionally haven't really worked together. It's looking at this problem of child criminal exploitation as a welfare issue, that it's, it involves the child's well-being and their best interests. And that's very important because some of these boys and young men have done very, very harmful things, but they've also experienced very, very harmful things. And they haven't had the love and support that they need and deserve. That approach relies on projects like TRY to engage with the youngsters who are hardest to reach. TRI's programme in Denor started with targeting eight youngsters. They now engage with 44 young people. The intensive outreach is uncomfortable. You, you have to go to them, you have to stand with them while they're smoking joints, wherever, um, in the stairwells. And the bridging model is identifying the service that the young people need and building that trust with them and transferring that trust. The heroin epidemic in the 80s, you still see around the area today. It's fairly clear to see that it's a generational problem that it really goes, it goes down to the core that the intervention you are making long term is that the young people we're dealing with today, when, when they can change their lives around and they have kids and them kids are growing up, that's the intervention, that's the real intervention. This was done by the Regeneration Board, so it just shows all the community members over the years, going way back. So it's a mural coming from like the old St. Trees Gardens and it's shown you into the new. And it's shown you the regeneration process here over the years as well. I suppose the community members who are really supportive over the years, who are active in the community, kind of helping along the way as well. You're looking at the kids and the community members and realistically, that's, that's, who my, that's who my work benefits. You know, it's all about the community. It's all about reducing harm in the community and making the community feel safe. Christine Dunn is also a frontline worker with TRI, and she brings her own unique life experience to her work. I am involved with TRI because of my personal experience. I understand completely where these kids are coming from because I come from them myself and from generations, generational addiction running in the family. The kids really need support, love, care and support is what they really need. A bit of guidance, you know. It's like almost if you look at it like they're in a dark tunnel and they don't see any light out and what I try, try to do is just be that light, do you know what I mean? Um, and sometimes they can see the light and they be like, because they're afraid of it too. Do you know what I mean? Uh, so that's just like literally what we just try to do all the time. Sean has come to Dublin to meet Carl and the team at Try. Well, it's great to be here. This is where all the magic happens. You know, all the work that kind of we're involved with from a research point of view actually comes to life with people like Carl and Christina and Pierce who really do kind of bring the work to life, bring the science to life. And um, these are the people who 
change the lives for young people. Yeah. You know, being able to make changes child by child and family by family can actually change a narrative in a local area. A project like this has already changed lives. You know, so it's like what I was saying. We initially engaged with eight young people. We grew to 44. Most of them young people are not standing around engaging in stuff that they were engaging with at the start. We try to find the most vulnerable young people in our society and we try to give them a bit of empowerment and give them a future, a hope for a future. When you provide them with the opportunity, when you provide them with like the life skills that come so natural to other people, when you're providing them with that and you're saying you can work and you're re reinforcing them that they are good enough and you just kind of empowering them on the way. Um, you see, that, you, that that's how much this project would actually change lives. I know from my own upbringing, the children where we've uncovered their stories in the Greentown programme certainly have the dice loaded against them. And what we're trying to do with the Greentown programme really at a small level is to provide a pragmatic response to try and load the dice for those children back in their favour. At its core, this research is about changing children's lives. There are just under 4,000 men and women serving sentences in Irish prisons. For those returning to society, education can be transformative in terms of employment and rebuilding lives. Change maker Sarah Sartori from Maynooth University is the researcher of an innovative project that uses storytelling to help break down the barriers of stereotypes and build empathy. So I'm here at Maynooth University. I'm the researcher on the Story Exchange Project, which is about bringing Mountjoy prisoners together with Maynooth University students to connect over what they have in common rather than what sets them apart. Sarah is research manager of College Connect, which promotes access for groups and individuals who are underrepresented in Irish universities. College Connect did a research project in 2019 with prisoners and former prisoners around uh, barriers to education they experienced and then through that partnership which was with the Pathway Centre for Prisoners and Former Prisoners and through working with Mount Joy, the Story Exchange came into uh, our sphere. This is the first time the Story Exchange project is going back into the prison since the beginning of COVID-19 restrictions. Sarah has come to Mount Joy to see how preparations are going. 13 students in Mount Joy are taking part in this. So they're preparing today and um, at the same time there are students in Maynooth preparing. And the idea is that we're going to be bringing the two groups together. The story exchange is about breaking down differences, breaking down barriers, sort of connecting over what makes us human. Very often the people who manage to turn their lives around, either while they're in prison or post prison, it's been one person has said something, has, has made a difference, has sort of been the spark that's, that's sort of lit that fire and helped them make those changes. So this is a story exchange project, but it's so much more than that. Also attending the Story Exchange preparations is collaborator, Willie White. So my name is Willie White. I am an actor, I'm a comedian, but I'm also a former pupil of this place here behind me, Mount Joy. The Story Exchange project is a unique collaboration between Mount Joy Prison, Maynooth University and Goshka, the President's Award. Before you go in, it's all, you always feel a little bit nervous, you know, especially because you're meeting a new group for the first time. I was delighted to see so many because um, we were standing in the chapel and just to see the lads kept coming in and, and then all of a sudden there's 15 of them sitting there in the Gashka t-shirts looking really, really well. So really today is, is really what we're going to try and do is bring you through what a story exchange is. You know, a story exchange to me, I was just saying to Sarah, usually when I was exchanging stories years ago when I used to be caught up in criminality, and when I was taking drugs, you were using a police car, you were with someone going, look, this is what we were doing, like, do you know what I mean? My auntie says to me, Ma, she said to me, Ma, when did you realise William had a drug problem? It would have happened to be back in the early 1990s when William came home from an all-night rave and came into the kitchen at about 7 o'clock in the morning and started trying to make a sandwich but was actually buttering two plates. And that's the truth. I was standing there like that, you know, buttering two plates. 
I think it was great to hear the laughter. A laughter is not a sound you hear a lot in prisons. So it was great to hear the laughter that they got from Willa White and to see the enthusiasm for the project. Lads, I wish us all the best. So we're in the preparation stage with the lads in, in the progression unit. So we're talking to them about what the project is about, what they can expect when students from Maynooth come. The magic of the story exchange is that in the exchange of a story, um, each person takes on the other person's story. So you effectively jump into the other person's shoes to tell the story and something happens in that exchange. I suppose a good day for me going out would be, I remember with a U club a good few years ago, me and a few of my friends and family went to Wexford quad biking and we were down there for a few hours and on the way back we got food and it was, it was just, it was a good laugh and we talked about it for a long time and that, that's about it. Great. John was telling me his story. It felt a little bit weird for me because there wasn't a lot of stuff like that that happened for me when I was a teenager or I was a kid at his age. It was, it was exciting for me to hear that he was doing something like that. You know, when you look at the environment that he's in now, you know, like, and things could have been an awful lot different for him. Some people just end up here for one act or something silly that they do in life. That's always a bit sad, to be honest. When you're listening to, like, a young guy's story, like, for me, always what's going in my head is, you know, how, how did you end up in, you know, one of the biggest, or the biggest prison in Dublin? You're engaging with the story and listening to the story, but it's, um, it's, it, it, it's emotional. For me, it's emotional. I believe that everybody, everybody has a story to tell. Some of them are very unique. Some of them are very tragic. A lot of prisoners here have tragic stories to tell. But some of them have a lot of positive stories. It's just that they made the wrong choice at a wrong particular time. And it's to tap into the positivity. Um, um, and that's what the story exchange does. So it went down really well, um, apart from the nerves. There's a sense of responsibility. And when, when they each had gone through their stories, we were able to go back and say, what did that feel like? How did that feel to, to be responsible for somebody else's story? What we discovered with this group was um, perceptions, notions that people had about, you know, your notion of a prisoner or your impression of a student. What that was, we really got to explore through the stories. At Maynooth University, the story exchange team meet with the students prior to their planned visit to the prison. I mean, I've never been in a prison before, so obviously you're going to be a bit kind of apprehensive about that. And the lads even said that to me, that even, you know, we like just met the governors there and we're chatting with them. It is still that apprehension, you know, of, of worry, obviously. Just as the Maynooth students were due to enter Mountjoy Prison, rising numbers in COVID-19 meant rigid restrictions were put back into place. Students and prisoners would meet, but not in person. When we met in October last, we, we were really close because things were starting to open up and we really thought that we were going to be in a position to bring the two groups together to facilitate the story exchange in, in the prison. That didn't happen because we know that COVID accelerated. It is going to be a real trial to try and get across the magic of a story exchange um, in, in a Zoom type situation and it can happen. The challenge here is we have four young men in a boardroom type situation and the students are going to be in a room. It would be an awful shame for it not to happen. The, the Mount Joy lads were so eager to participate in the story exchange as part of their Gashka award. So we're, we're just eager to see a sense of completion for them in this part. We're ready to go here, guys. With Sarah introducing everybody online and after some nervous introductions, it's time to exchange stories with the theme, a challenging time. I'm Gavin and I'd say kind of challenge or a time I showed bravery was the uh, first time I had to get Dublin bus using this stick. And I think it was kind of scary because, you know, I have arthritis and the age profile for that is normally a bit older. So getting the bus kind of as a young 23 year old man with the stick, I was kind of worried because you never know kind of going out in public like that, you know, you might get looks, reactions, people like, people might even shout at you. Like again, I work, with, you know, a lot of my mates are disabled and you'd hear horror stories like that. So I was a bit scared, but I was like, I need to do it, you know, need need to use it. So I show bravery, I guess you could say. 
I Gavin, um, um, my uh, challenge is I've been in prison for almost three years and I've been in over the whole pandemic. Um, and when my family and kids come to visit, um, not being able to hold them uh, is quite hard. And um, I haven't touched them or played with them in, um, in 24 months or two years. So that's been quite hard. I think this is, this is a partnership between Maynooth University, Mountjoy Prison, and Gashka the President's Award. All in their own different ways are, are about the, the improvement of lives. And bring the three together, I absolutely do believe that it can impact change, even in small ways. I'm Abby, nice to meet you again. Um, yeah, because I know the story I told was a bit more lighthearted, but then the one that I was told by one of the lads, it, it, was, like, it was a really emotional story and I didn't want to like say anything wrong. I, di I didn't want to like, you know, I wanted to make sure, you know, I want to make sure I did it justice, you know, because it was like, it was really emotional. Uh, a challenging time in my life was back in 2013. Uh, I would have been 12 and I found out that uh, my uh, mother was having an affair and that I, it was very challenging for me because I had yeah, my sister and she was only she was only six at the time, so uh, it was just when having my dad near arm was sorting a load of stuff. I was always the one that was left back in the house to sort of look after me, my sister, and uh, try and make it normal for her and uh, still be like trying to make it normal for myself too. So that was just challenging back then. I thought, you know, with like our first time meeting the lads, it was going to be something, you know, they thought of on the way in or just something like to get the stories going. I didn't think that he would open up like as quickly as he did. Like there's definitely a connection already built there. So I can't wait to meet the lads again to like properly talk to them. This project is very much about empathy building using the uh, Narrative 4 story exchange tool. And that facilitates the possibilities and it, it facilitates the notion of hope and hope is all about looking to the future. Yeah. I think it gives the lads not only a bit of hope, but it gives them a view of looking at the way other people live their life as well from different backgrounds, different environments. And it also opens up opportunities for them as well, maybe if they want to do something or maybe they want to go to college. Can we claim that it changes lives? I don't know that we can, but for the Mount Joy students, maybe they can realise, look, I'm as, I'm as good as the Maynooth students sitting beside me. And the Maynooth students can, can recognise that you know, these guys aren't as different from me as I thought. That in itself is changing. Maybe it's a, a, it's a word of encouragement. Maybe it's seeing that people are invested in, 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 in me doing well, and maybe that's enough to change lives. And if that happens, then that's a success. Next time on Changemakers. There was a mindset, there was a culture change in Ireland that we felt um, that we were no longer, you know, tolerated. We were embraced and celebrated. I think the STEM passport for inclusion has the potential to change lives. It's like a little bit of a push to say you don't have to end up like that, like you can become somebody else, like you can kind of make it for yourself.